Okay, welcome uh, once again to financial accounting. Today we want to uh, do a review of the 2023 model examination paper for CPA. So as we can see, um, the paper is still three hours, 15 minutes. And in the first 15 minutes, they tell you not to, uh, you may not start writing your answers, but this is a time when the examiner says, start and that means you're going to use this time to read through and make selections of the question so telling us section a uh contains objectives who are about choice questions well section b has five questions and you have to select four you write e every answer on a, a new fresh page of your answer booklet and again they are telling you, please read other instructions that are usually on the booklet. So this uh, is still starting from question one, uh, from question two, which is the, uh, the structured question. Now, usually uh, the other questions are objectives, are multiple choice questions, um, and here they're not provided, but I, I, I will try to just share uh, samples of the same on the WhatsApp group so that you can see how some of some of these questions could be. So they're just more choice questions where they bring you, let's say um, a transaction and say maybe Jen purchased motor vehicle for 20 million and incurred uh, VAT and import duties of 1 million. What would be the double entry? So they give you A, debit, motor vehicle, credit, cash. B, Credit, uh, credit motor vehicle, debit cash. So they're able to give you different options. So we can see the first question here uh, is providing us a trial balance extracted from the books of Digida Enterprises Limited for their ended uh, 30th June, 2022. And uh, they're providing us different items here. We have, um, this is a trial balance. So land and building, machinery, furniture and fittings, motor vehicle, accounts receivable, purchases and sales, and so on. And then they are giving us a closing inventory, basically additional information. And uh, next they are giving us uh, to generalize. That's, a, that's That is uh, what they are giving us. Second question um, is to do define, distinguish between RRTGS and electronic funds transfer. And then they are giving us uh, records here. Uh, this is uh, receipts and payments. This is for nanny for profit. And then they are giving us uh, explain the qualitative X sticks that make the information provided in the financial statements useful. They're giving you a question on partnerships. And then the next thing they're giving you is a question on bank reconciliation. And then the next thing they're also giving you is um, they're giving you uh, saying the bookkeeper discovered the total debit was more than the credit by this side. They're giving you a question on suspense accounts. And lastly, uh, question six here, they're giving you ethical dilemmas and giving you a question here with details on aspects of depreciation. And that is how the question is, the mode exam. Now, this is how this is how the paper looks like, and I've just thought about something. So what we're going to do is this. Um, today is the Thursday. Okay, today is Thursday. Now, um, I'm going to request you kindly to create time and do this paper on your own 
or three hours and 15 minutes. Time yourself and do the paper. If the three hours and 15 minutes end, stop. And you submit your answer. And what we are going to do, I'm going to create time for us to go through these questions. Now, it doesn't mean that these are the questions that are going to come in the exam, but I want us to use this. This is also official to test yourself. Where are you at as an individual? If this was the exam itself, Definitely, of course, we can't leave any kind of uh, possibilities that uh, one, or, one or two questions, similar questions could come, or even if they, they are set differently, but at least a topic could, could, could show up. So I want you to, to do this, this, and um, I want to make it open. Be honest with yourself. Of course, there are no answers anywhere for this. Uh, it's just like other questions which have solutions, but just be honest with yourself and create time. Today is Thursday. I would want us to go through, um, I, 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 want, I want you to go through this to find any time on Saturday. Any time on Saturday. And the maximum Okay, the time of submission, the deadline for times of submission for this solution should actually be what what should it be? Is 5 p.m. on Saturday Thursday. okay? But pardon? Somebody was saying something. When was when is it? I had somebody proposing. I think someone said Thursday, but I think uh, the earlier we do it, the better, so that you're able to take us through. Yes, because because the exam is is just a few days away, so mm. that's why I'm. So I'm Saturday, me yeah, I wouldn't mind Saturday five p.m. Okay, Saturday five p.m. Is that okay with everyone? No, Saturday five p.m. I can't me, because mm. I work normal hours at least Sunday, latest Sunday. Okay, I think there is a problem with a Saturday because tomorrow there is QT. Then Saturday again there is QT. Let's have it maybe on a Tuesday. That you have Sunday. It's only three hours. I think it's Sunday only can try Sunday. Okay, okay, Miss Kak. It's only it's 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 because because uh you cannot say Tuesday because Tuesday is when we want uh even earlier on because what I what I what I wanted is because um Tuesday 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 may 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 look somehow far so I want you to create time at least now I've understood some people work so those that are done make sure you submit on Saturday now. Those others that cannot submit on Saturday, submit on Sunday, at least by, by five Sunday. And let's, let's ensure that we all submit. Actually, the password to the class will be that you have submitted. I think I'll, I'll, I'll be very serious and I'll, I'll not upload the video even for anyone. Because I want you to, I want you guys to pass. And if I, if I don't have to, if I don't put strict uh, rules, I think I might, I might, I might get challenges of getting you guys pass. So between now, actually, for you, you may say that okay, Friday may I'll have class. I, I may create my three hours, uh, maybe on Saturday. Okay, and then maybe you say, oh, let me do mine on Sunday. And for you, what you do basically. Create those early hours, early times, either maybe late 
yours could be i'm going to do my my paper from seven to nine when you have less distractions you get to an environment that you have less distractions or you could say i'm going to do my exam uh, i'm going to to do it in early in the morning maybe from uh from seven and by 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 around uh 10 you're getting down okay so yeah. okay okay yes it's fine so let's, it's fine let's 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 do try let's do try and uh what you can do uh for now just keep the paper as as is you can do some preparations okay you can do some preparations you can do read and master but then again you should not you should not look at the question and go and look at uh, the materials <laughs> you get it so make sure that this question is as if you've not looked at even more, uh, uh, it i know that you're only going to look at it that time you're just trying to treat the mental preparation because that's how the exam is going to be and this is self discipline for you and just time yourself, get that phone and put a timer. You just want to be honest with yourself and see, and, and see how can I, like what exactly will happen in the exam? Because when I tell you that it's hard to finish in exam for such a paper, sometimes like, you don't get it. But when you're going to try this out, out of the examination, it's even going to help you, okay? And what I'm going to emphasize on uh, going forward when uh, we are going through this, and now some of the strategies that you can actually leverage on to actually uh, pass this exam. So I believe that, that that can work for us instead of me going through, because I've gone through several things. There are several videos I've made, and now I want you to try out this mod exam on your own and see how, how, how read it can go for you. And I encourage you that you also do for the rest of the other papers in case you have any other papers, just look out for them and try out. And you know the good news also, the examiner also provided you solutions. Now there are some people who, who run and uh, get the solutions. Please don't. Okay? So is that noted? It's noted. Okay. Yes, please. So you know where to get the, the, the paper? Uh, just be disciplined and uh, get it at the right time and keep it, and then we shall be able to go through each of uh, each 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 of the questions to help you accordingly. Okay, so leaving the model paper alone, do we have uh, challenges? Other challenges. Uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I know it, will, it is in the previous. Um, Syllabus. In this syllabus, I don't see entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship was combined in another course, uh, in another paper. So don't give it focus, although it is in the past papers. So any challenges? Any areas that you'd want me to, to capture? And yes, Jacqueline. Uh, on the thing for internship, the, like when, when a partner takes over an asset, how do you go about that? Let's say in case the partner is leaving, and he takes over an asset worth six million. How do you go about that? Okay, does anyone? Uh, is it is it is it at the time of winding up, or it's just a change in partnership? Is it change at the time in of partnership? Okay, does any one of us want to try that before I no, give my response? Anyone wants to try that? Pardon on the question. Uh, please, Jacqueline, go on. Uh, you, I, was you, saying, you repeat. <laughs> I was saying, how do you go about like when 
let's say there are two partners, Jackie and uh, and Jane are for a partnership. Then Jackie is leaving, but she takes over an asset worth six million. How do you go about that? Her taking over that asset, how do you handle it? Uh-huh. Anyone wants to try? Please use your general accounting knowledge. Don't be afraid to try. In case you find such, uh, such. Okay, let me say. What would be the double entry? That is, uh, that 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 should simplify things for you, because accounting works on double entry. What's the double entry? What comes to your mind? Does anyone want to try? Yes, Patrick. Mm, I just wanted to have a pardon on the question. Maybe I give it a try. Okay, the question is saying uh, two partners, uh, Samuel and Patrick, are in a partnership, and Samuel is leaving the partnership, but he's going with an asset valued at six million. Uh, so according to me, let me give it a try. Mm. Uh, the double entry would be we shall credit maybe the, 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 the asset uh, account or register to remove the asset that uh, the, the other living partner is going with. Mm. And then we shall. Uh, oh, can, can we treat it like a dispose or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you credit the asset register or uh, and that particular asset that is uh, being taken by the other partner, mm -hmm. then we shall uh, debit that partner's account. Okay. Okay. Thanks for trying. Uh, anyone else wants to try or you want to second uh, what you're saying? And I want to ask Jacqueline um, at winding up. Because uh, one of the areas that uh, to do with partnership that I shared with you is at winding up where we draw up a realization account and we write off the assets to the realization account and so on. What happens when uh, a partner, instead of um, an asset being realized, maybe sold off, uh, a partner takes over an asset? What is usually the double entry? Jacqueline, this is for you. Uh, <laughs> have you gone through the winding up video? Yes. Uh -huh. What is usually double entry? You debit the individual's capital account uh -huh. and you credit the realization account with the agreed takeover price. Uh -huh. Okay. So now, if at all uh, it's not winding up, would you agree to what he has said? Does it make sense to you or you have uh, reservations on it? It does make sense. Uh, it does make sense. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what uh what he says is actually uh a right way to uh to go about it because at the end of the day, you don't want this asset to remain in your in your books of accounts, and then you also want to ensure that uh your capital uh uh you're trying to reflect this change in uh in the account of the the partner. Although, uh, one of the things that you get to realize is, is that um, if a partner is taking over an asset, this asset has also been depreciated. Okay, this asset has been depreciated before. So there is also an amount that is seated in the accumulated depreciation account for this specific asset. So 
if you take this amount directly uh, taking, because also here, one of the things that you should be able to ask yourself, uh, remember if it's, uh, let's say it's a motor vehicle and this motor vehicle was bought uh, maybe at, uh, at 10 million. So the, uh, the partner is taking this motor vehicle and maybe by that time, the net book value of this motor vehicle is at let's say 7 million. Okay. So ideally it has depreciated about 3 million. Now as the partner takes it, is taking it at a given value. So the, the, at the point in time when the partner is taking it, the motor vehicle is being valued at 4 million. So it means that uh, the partner is basically taking it at 4 million. Now, of course, the partner is not going, uh, is not bringing money, but they are taking it uh, so that, that uh, even whatever proceeds they would have been given, those actually netted off uh that that amount has to be netted off before they are given their their proceeds like what they are their what whatever they had within the within the partnership so my take would be um we for us to take to take into consideration even the accumulated depreciation would pass this transaction through a disposal account so when we are trying to wind up we bring in a realization account and so on. But if, for example, the, uh, the partnership continues, would do like the way we do for the private business, would uh, go on to debit, the disposal account, and this is usually at cost, and then credit the asset account, And this is also at cost. Then we will now come to the so-called accumulated depreciation because this, this asset has, has depreciated. So we'll, we'll credit and then debit our disposal account. Once we are done with that, we we'll then now make the transaction uh, to reflect that. Because in the normal private business, if what we do here is we now recognize the proceeds. Okay, let's say debit bank, and then we credit our disposal account. But in this case, we are not receiving bank. So where there is bank is where the capital account is coming in. Okay? Is where the capital account is coming in. Now, um, you will realize that uh, if, uh, from, from, from partnership, you realize that sometimes the partners are running it could, they may run a fixed capital account and they may so run maybe a floating capital account. Now we know that if they are running a fixed capital account, we also have something called a current account. And this is where uh, uh, if it's a fixed cap capital account as the capital account records specifically only uh, aspects of uh, capital, the, ca the current account is actually recording aspects of uh, of how the business of is 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 relating with the partner. Okay, sorry, I was was on another page. So I was saying that if the motor vehicle is ten, uh, seven million. And then let's say the partner is uh, taking this vehicle at 4 million. What I'm saying is 
we approach this, uh, and this is a continuous uh, partnership. We approach this from the perspective of how a private business would account for uh, a disposal. And I'm saying like we, we say our first step is usually to do recognize Do recognize uh, the write off of the asset. Somebody says they can't see my screen. Uh, Dorothy, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. Okay. So I'm saying the first step is to de recognize the asset by crediting the asset at cost. Because remember, the asset account is usually prepared at cost. But sometimes you, you realize some questions, they only give you the netbook value. So those ones you work at netbook value, but most times they're at cost. So you write off at cost, the asset is off. Now, if it's at cost, means it's accumulated depreciation is still in the accumulated depreciation account. And that's why you come to the accumulated depreciation account and debit the disposal account and credit accumulated depreciation. We know that accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance. So whenever you debit, you're reducing. So that you know that even whatever you may, you leave in the accumulated depreciation account specifically relates to, to the assets that are remaining. As you re remove it from there, we, I was trying to say that um, if it's a normal private business where you are receiving proceeds, we are receiving money from the sale of the asset, we shall debit bank and credit our disposal account. But in this case where we are not receiving money and the partner is actually taking our asset, then we shall proceed to debit our capital account. But I was just trying to bring in the aspect of the current account because you sometimes realize that, uh, like I say, that you, you made the partnership may be either running a fixed capital account where they have a capital account and then a current account, or they may be running a floating capital account, which records both aspects of what would have gone in the current account and also what goes in the capital account. Now, in that case, if at all, because this scenario we are looking at is if a partner is leaving the business. If a partner is leaving the business, we usually write off what is in the current account and write it off to the capital account. But in the case, the partner was actually remaining in the business. It's just, just like the way you're running a business and maybe there's a vehicle that is old and one of the partners takes, it, takes over that vehicle and maybe at a given value. Now, in that case, if, the, if there's a current account that is existing, then we record actually in the current account, not in the capital account because... Uh, that transaction will not be affecting the capital account. If at all, the farm, uh, the partnership farm runs uh, a so-called fixed capital account. So is that okay, Jacqueline? Pardon on that last statement. Okay. So what I was saying is that if, you should be able to know that um, for partnerships, they can either have a fixed capital account or they can have a floating capital account. If it is a fixed capital account, you usually have a capital account and a current account. And if it's a floating capital account, usually the capital account records whatever would have gone into the current account. So you just have a capital account. Now saying that in a case where this, this partner is not leaving the business and such a transaction happens, because it can happen, then instead of debiting your capital account, in case you're running a fixed capital account, you don't debit the capital account, but you rather debit the current account in case you're running on a fixed capital account. 
Is that okay? I think it was Namara. This was it Namara. Some somebody was asking. Was it Nampera? Yeah, it's fine now. Okay, fine. Yeah, so that is what I wanted to comment. So thanks, Jacqueline, for the question. Uh-huh. Any other questions for me? You can you can ask. Uh-huh. Is it yes, Jacqueline? Yes, sir. Uh, I just want like some little throwback on 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 accounting for not for profit organizations because I've not got that chance like to go through some videos. I've been up and down with work. So I just want some throwback. So what is your challenge on accounting for money for profit? Did you attend a class where we went through accounting for money for profit? Yeah, I attended, but I didn't complete to the to the end. I stopped in the middle. And then you should go through the video because there is a lot. I cannot just start and end around in the middle. It would be mm -hmm. very good for you to first go through um uh the so-called uh, video. Why? Mm. Because uh, there's a lot that is to do with money for profit. Okay, there is a lot that's not, and 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 much of your focus should be to understand things that go uh, in the receipts and payments, things that go in the income and expenditure, mm. and also to understand aspects of what happens uh, if a money for profit has. Uh, a business, a profitable business, knowing that we, we draw uh, a profit and loss account for that business. And then the profit that is actually gotten from here, sometimes they call it a trading account. And the profit that is gotten from running that business is part of the incomes that are included in the income and expenditure account. And one of the things that you also realize is that they will provide you with expenses uh, for both the business and provide you for the, for the whole NGO. So being able to compute the respective expenses that led to each of them would be able to help you accordingly. There is also a common, uh, uh, a common, a common document they usually require to prepare. It's called a statement of affairs which is more of like a balance sheet, uh, but it, it, it is looking at opening balances, okay? So there's a lot. Uh, you need to know how to treat uh, subscriptions and uh, to draw up a subscription account, be able to, uh, to handle things like, for example, if you have live subscriptions, it is one of the most easy topics that I would really encourage you to really go through. Okay. And I saw even in, it was in a mod exam. So ensure, ensure that you really go through that. So I don't want to really uh, go so much into because I know for some people they really went through. So since this is a class for everyone, I just want to leave it at that. Okay, sir. Okay. As Dorothy says, I have something like solvent and insolvent partners. Now, uh, when, you, when you're when you working on partner, partnerships, especially the winding up of partnerships, the word insolvent, an insolvent partner is basically one that, um, I think you've, you've had something to do with an insolvent business. The business is insolvent. A partner who is unable to pay their debt in the course of uh, running of the business, maybe at the time when uh, business is winding up, 
then would be regarded as an insolvent partner. Now, how you usually did know that somebody is an insolvent partner is usually from, the, from their capital account. When you're winding up the business and you realize that somebody has a debit balance on their capital account, then much likely that, that partner is actually is, uh, is a negative. Instead of being taking money, he has to give put money to the business. Now, um, when it comes to, uh, to insolvent partners, okay, we usually have we usually have a rule. Does any one of us know the rule that we follow and what it says? Anyone want to try? Anyone wants to try? Has anyone of us heard about the Ghana versus Mary rule? Pardon? Can I try? Please try. For when a partner becomes insolvent, mm. the remaining partners have to share. Is it the person something like that? Too? Uh, you're breaking. Uh, you're, bre you're breaking, but at least we've gotten an idea. Anyone wants to add on that? Yes. Please. Uh, in, 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 the, in case of an insolvent, uh, in the insolvency of one partner, uh, uh -huh. The loss has to be uh, made by, by 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 the solvent partners. In what ratio? Uh, in the ratio of their capital at the balance sheet, I think at uh, the time of, of balancing it. You know, uh huh. Okay. Do do others agree with what he has said? Okay, uh, uh, the Ghana versus Mary rule says that the loss on account of insolvency of a partner is usually capital loss, which is borne by the solvent partners. The solvent partners are those that have a credit balance on their capital account. And they should, be, they should share the balance standing, they should share that loss in the ratio of the balance standing in their capital accounts, which is the balance date as what he's saying, at the time, at the date of the dissolution of the firm. That is what uh, it does says. So that is a uh, Repeat the you. ratio bit. The loss on an account of insolvent partners is the capital loss which shall be borne by solvent partners in the ratio of the balance standing of the ratio in the ratio of the balance standing in their capital accounts at the date of dissolution. Yeah, but you can be able to, um, I do believe that that is even within the notes. Okay? I do believe it that. It seems uh, I didn't receive those notes because I've checked, I can't find them. For partnerships. Me, it's for partnership. I don't okay. have those notes. I also did don't. You, did you see the video? Yes, but the notes, no. The notes, no, eh? Okay, so 
uh, those notes are in the in the SCCA handbook that I did share on um, on the WhatsApp group, but I just want to see if I can be able to reshare the same. If it can come again. But I do believe that most of you have it. That document, I shared it earlier on, I think when we were starting. But I can just click forward it for you people. It has also topics, uh, uh, other topics as well. Like I, uh, I think I, I mentioned in that video, uh, financial accounting, for SEC and, uh, and CPA are the same. These are principles and they are, the, they are principles that are recognized worldwide. So the materials are helpful. So if there, are, there is any topic that uh, you have gone through that uh, and maybe the notes didn't seem to be clear or you didn't understand the concept, then you can be able to leverage on uh, those uh, uh, basically those materials, they should be they should be able to come through. I think they are trying to load, but should be able to come through uh, accordingly. Okay. So, uh, the, there are also some questions here um, on depreciation. So I normally get challenges in preparing. Uh, the accumulated depreciation account and disposal account, like the last question we did. I don't know what your challenges could be specifically. Is it that you don't you don't know how to prepare them, or there is a specific challenge? I don't. Know. Are you able to speak, Hajala? Okay, I don't seem to hear Ajara. Maybe she's not able to speak. Ajara, you're on mute. If you were trying to speak, I cannot hear you. Ajara says, I don't know how to prepare them. Ajara, I want to I want to send you to I want to send you to this YouTube channel. I posted a video on depreciation just a few days back. So there's a there's a, a revision question here for depreciation. And it has an current asset account, the depreciation ac uh, account. It, I believe it should also have uh, it should also have. should also have the question on disposal. So I encourage you to, to go through this video. Ajara, have you gone through this video? Because I break, I, I, I give you everything here. Even this has a disposal and so on. Okay. So you go through, and in case by the next class you totally don't understand what is there, 
then I'll be able, you can see there's a disposal account, there's also a bank account as the, pro, the same process that I've been talking about when it comes to the disposal here. This disposal, that question will be able to give you a good idea of exactly what you need to be able to do. So I do encourage you to go through that. I, I, I want to make sure that I utilize this time to only go through things that we've not done, okay? Uh, Dorothy says uh, she wants um, us to go through the statement of affairs. Dorothy, is there a specific challenge on statement of affairs? Oh, you just had it the first time I was mentioning it. I had seen it in a, in a revision paper, uh, but uh, in a revision video. Uh, reading the notes, I completely failed. It seemed it it uh, it seemed like a balance sheet, but not a balance sheet, so it confused me. It is a it it looks like a balance sheet usually. Usually, a statement of affairs is used to calculate capital in most cases. And if it's, if it's um, a nanny for profit, usually it will be used to calculate the accumulated fund if it's a nanny for profit. So the examiner will give you assets at the start of the period, broken down, motor vehicle, furniture, and so on. And they'll give you the opening balances. So you will do your assets and you start with your nanny current assets. You do your current assets and then move to liabilities usually we say less liabilities because uh when you calculate in capital capital is like equity when it comes to how uh, ent uh small entities work capital is equity because they don't have any other elements of cap of equity so when you get your total assets and, and subtract liabilities the last thing that you should have is is your capital, is your capital or accumulated fund, if it's a, an, an NGO or an NF for profit. So that is the reason why the examiner that, uh, uh, may ask you to do a statement of affairs. Sometimes they ask you, sometimes they don't ask you. I believe that one of these videos of Nani for Profit should, should have at least a statement of affairs. Don't know if this one has, but at least one of them should have one. So I encourage you to go through um, at, at least uh, some of these to see how we did calculate that. Uh, although I think for some questions, they actually already, the examiner will already give you uh, now, like you can see here, when you look at this video, the examiner went ahead to give us, he gave us these balances of uh, as at uh, 2020. And you see what they were asking. They were asking us to draw up the profit and loss and so on. But one thing you realize in this question, here they even gave us the accumulated fund. So whatever they gave you this, actually, this that they gave you up here is more of a, a statement of affairs. Why? Because it is what is, because this is as at 31st December, 2020, the so-called um, receipts and payments. But when it comes to this balance sheet, they are calling the following information relates to uh, Gate Women's Social Club as at 1st July, January 2020. So this information they have given you, this first information of nanny current assets, total assets, and so on, it's more of a st statement of affairs. 
So estimate of affairs is just more of like your balance sheet as at the start of the period. So this video will be very, very helpful to you. Okay. Yep. So I've, I've finished the questions that were in the chat box. Any other questions? I, I believe you have seen, uh, I've shared in the WhatsApp group the notes. So I do believe that uh, we've been able to see um, the notes. When you check those notes, usually what I do is I just search. Uh, when you click on your phone, you'll see uh, something like search. So when you search, Uh, partnerships are on which page? When you look at the top table of contents, partnerships are on page 300, 323. So you go to that page 323 and look at those partnerships. Everything that is in this, uh, in, in this, in this, in this book, that I've shared with you on WhatsApp is relevant to you and you it will be very helpful. Okay? Yeah. Ajara says that she will be waiting for the video. The videos are on the on on on, on what? On the YouTube channel. The videos are on the YouTube channel. And you can get them directly. Yes, Jacqueline. Uh, so I just want to inquire. Mm -hmm. have, have you gone through single entries? Oh, you've not yet covered it. I'm not going to cover it. It's uh, it, it's 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 actually um. If you go through, um, if you go through, and actually, the, if you go through the video for single entry, because single entry actually, when you when you look at uh, when you look at the syllabus, I hope you remember when you look at our syllabus, single entry encompasses uh, something to do with control accounts and I remember us going through control accounts now to expound on that on the on what on how the control accounts can now be used in um let's say when we um doing something on single entry I would encourage you to go through one of the videos I think I've I've, I've shared more than um one on single entry. Just a moment. Okay, right here. So you can see that um half of the incomplete records incorporates the contra accounts, which we went through right now. And what I'm saying is for the rest of these others, okay, for the rest of these others, what I'm going to ask you to do is to go through this video. This one. Sorry about the advert. This video has everything to do with incomplete records. And after you've gone through this video, believe me, you'll have all that text because 
uh, things to do with margin, things to do with markups are all spoken about here. As I think you can see margin, markup, I explain them in this video for you to understand, okay? So that is what I would say. Is that okay, Jacqueline? Yes. Okay, great. I've labored to put uh, all this information there because I know some of you were saying you have challenges with accessing Zoom, the links don't work and they load and they don't, uh, the network, they require a lot of, int of data. So I just said, let me put all this information here and you can find it. Okay. Yeah. So are we good to go? I think we are good to go. So I encourage you um, to do the, uh, to do the, that model exam and share your responses. Now, what you're going to do this time, instead of, you're not going to share your, um, you're not going to share your answers in, um, in the WhatsApp group. You're going to share these uh, answers with me, okay? Uh, what you're going to do is you can drop me a WhatsApp. Okay, and I know that uh, all of you have my WhatsApp number. I know some of you have contacted me in the past and uh, uh, I, I made late respond, but for this specifically, for this task, I'm going to dedicate time to be able to, to look, to see your submissions. And then once we are going through, you should be able to, know where you went wrong and you should be able to have questions to ask, okay? I actually expected that uh, at this time, we have more questions that can be asked. So make sure that you go through that. And like I said, Sunday, make sure that you don't cross Sunday and you've not shared your response. Time yourself, very important. Don't do in a time where you're going to be distracted. Time yourself and do the exam. And once the time sto stops like this, please stop there because uh, this, is not, uh, this is not an exam as per se, it's to test yourself how far you can do you can how far you can go within three hours okay all right so unless there's any other question i would want to end this uh session here and wish you success in the model exam as well as uh wish you all the best in the preparations for this coming exam the real exam as well because I know it is uh, coming and uh, we need to be able to pass it highly. I want to get prize winners this time because you have all it takes to prize win this, this exam. Okay? Sir. Please. Is that Samuel? I'm hearing. Yes, at the beginning of, of the lectures, when we began in, in Jan, you say towards the end, you would give us some objective questions. Will you provide them for let us? Me, let, me, let me just look for them right now and share. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, have uh, the best in the rest of your day and evening. Bye-bye for now.